Ultrasound guided center lines are rapidly becoming standard of care. Ultrasound allows us to do this procedure much safer than a standard blind landmark approach. In this segment, I'm going to take you through how we can map the jugular vein for the procedure of an internal jugular line using the central approach. So let me show you how we'll position our ultrasound. We have our model here lying down. Uh, normally we'll be at the head of the bed. And if you look at his neck, you can actually see the two heads of the sternal cleidomastoid. We see a sternal head and a clavicular head that usually form a triangle. Normally in a blind landmark approach, our needle will be going to the apex of the triangle. We're now going to use ultrasound to localize the vein. We're going to now find the vein and make the needle insertion so much safer. We're going to go ahead and choose our system, which is going to be placed just to the right of the patient. We're going to use a linear A transducer. We're going to go ahead and set up our examination type. I'm going to hit exam. I'm going to click on venous, select, and we're going to be ready to start scanning. We're going to also use a little trick to put the transducer marker actually to the patient's left. The reason I do this is to maintain the orientation from the head of the bed so the vein and the artery are in the normal anatomic positions so it's not to create more confusion when you're using ultrasound for guidance of a procedure. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of gel on this transducer. And now let's take a look at his neck in the normal place that we would normally have put our needle. So if we're looking at the screen, in the center of the screen is a very large anechoic structure and you can see that it easily collapses. This is the jugular vein. Just adjacent to this, uh, to the left of the screen and below the vein is the artery. That is what we want to avoid. And just a little bit more to the left of that is the thyroid. So the, the ultrasound allows us to easily find the vein. We can track it along its entire course. First thing we can identify is the vein patent. You might have a patient who, have had, who has had a previous cannulation and the vein itself may not be a good candidate. Uh, the second thing, once we've identified the vein, we can map the skin and actually put marks on the skin. And we can also look at the side of the ultrasound image to see how deep the vein is. And in this case, it's about one centimeter deep. I'm going to show you how you use ultrasound to actually guide your needle into the intral jugular vein. As you can see, we have a, a blue phantom here. We're going to be able to take a look at the vein first with ultrasound. And then we'll, I'm going to use the ultrasound transducer to actually guide my needle toward the vein. I'm going to go ahead and place a little bit of gel onto the neck where I expect the jugular vein to lie. And then I'm going to use my transducer to identify this vein. And you can see on this image, we can see what is supposed to be a vein here in the center. And it's compressible. It's about a centimeter deep or so. So I can use ultrasound guidance. I can now place this needle into the vein. Normally, this, this whole setup will be under a sterile procedure. The transducer will be covered with a sterile sheath. I'll be in full sterile prep, and the needle and the rest of the equipment will all be sterile. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I think you'll recognize how I'm placing the needle and how we're cannulating the vein. So I put the target in the center of the image. So this would be the jugular vein in the center, and we know that the jugular vein is about a centimeter and a half deep in this case. I'm now going to show you how you can actually follow the needle tip as you slowly march toward the vein. I have the jugular vein centered in the image. Uh, you can see it's compressible. We, we're sure it's the vein. Now I take my needle and put it right adjacent to the transducer in the mid part. And we can see the t needle tip. And I'm going to slowly advance. But while I'm advancing, I'm angling the transducer away from the needle and toward the needle tip. So I always have the needle tip in the field of view. And when I do that, I can always keep track of how far I've gone. And I do this nice and slow. And you can see I'm getting closer to the vein now. And I've actually hit the vein. And if you can get a, a close look here, you can actually see a little bit of blue liquid here, which 
demonstrates that I've actually hit the vein.